Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be taking a look at three-phase half-wave control rectifier with RL load. So let's get started. This is a circuit diagram of a three-phase half-wave control rectifier with RL load. Previously, we had seen the same circuit with an R load, isn't it? So the operation almost is closer to each other, but with slight differences when we are having the influence of an inductor in the circuit. So let's take a look into the detailed operation by looking at the waveforms. So we're going to consider supply voltage waveform. We're going to consider the output voltage for alpha is equal to zero. And we are going to consider for alpha less than 90 and alpha between 90 to 180 degrees. So we are going to consider used cases of alpha is equal to 60 and 120 degree to understand the waveforms in a better way. So let us consider three phase sinusoidal voltage. So each phase is phase displaced by an angle equal to 120 degree. The red one indicates phase A, the yellow one indicates phase B and the blue one indicates phase C. And the angle at each of these points is indicated over here. So let us extrapolate these waveforms and now in order to understand what happens at alpha is equal to zero, one important observation that we made in the previous video as well is that the thyristor will start conducting only after a minimum angle of 30 degrees. The reason is because before 30 degrees, if you're planning to trigger thyristor one, then thyristor two and thyristor three will reverse bias thyristor one and it will not be able to be controlled based on the requirement. So any control can be achieved only after a minimum angle of 30 degrees. Meaning to say, if I say alpha is equal to zero degrees, that means it will start at 30 degrees. It will not start at zero, it will start at 30 degrees. So very, very important observation. And each thyristor, since the overall cycle for each phase, that is 120 degree, 120 degree, 120 degree, that is in terms of the phase displacement, they are 120 degrees apart. So each thyristor will be conducting for a total period of 120 degree each. That is 360 divided by three. So if you remember these two points, that is minimum crossover frequency or the point at which the alpha can be triggered is 30 degrees and each thyristor conducts for a duration of 120 degrees. Understanding this operation is very, very simple. Now let's take a look when alpha is equal to zero, meaning to say at this point, what happens? That is, if you carefully observe, phase A is becoming more positive compared to that of phase B and phase C. Consequently, that is, VA is positive and negative, isn't it? As a result, anode is connected to positive and cathode is connected to negative of thyristor T1 and you're going to supply a gate pulse at alpha is equal to zero at this point. So consequently, what will happen? This thyristor will be forward biased and acts as short circuit. When it is acting as short circuit, what will happen at the load? You'll be getting plus and minus. Whatever you're supplying from VA will be appearing across the load terminals, that is V out, isn't it? So V out will be equal to VA, meaning to say whatever is VA, it will exactly follow the waveform of VA. So if you carefully observe now, the expression or the, the waveform of V out from the expression V out is equal to V A. So the output voltage waveform at this point will exactly follow the supply voltage waveform here. So this is for 120 degrees. The reason is because I mentioned that each thyristor will be conducting for 120 degrees. So that is from 30. If you add plus 120, it will be equal to 150. So till this point, it will be conducting. And why it will not be conducting after this point is because we are going to trigger thyristor T2. So when we are triggering thyristor T2, the supply voltage VB will be more positive compared to that of VA and VC. Consequently, T2 will be forward biased and acts as short circuit and V out in this case will be equal to VB. As in, whatever is the supply voltage, it will start following with respect to phase P. So you'll be exactly getting till this point. Again at 270 degree, what will happen? Phase that is with respect to phase C, T3 will be triggered and consequently you will be having T3 as short circuit and we will be getting V out is equal to VC. So it will exactly follow the voltage of phase C in this particular fashion. So the sequence repeats in this particular case. So it's always important to understand how to start the waveform as in when you're actually trying to draw the waveform, right? So there are possibilities where you will get confused as 
how do we get this sort of a curve here so it's always better to start at alpha is equal to zero at this point so it will be very easy for you to backtrack Bas basically based on the nature of waveform you can just extrapolate it the front and the back over here so i hope this point is clear at alpha is equal to zero it is pretty simple and straightforward for us to understand now let's take a look at what happens when alpha is less than 90 degrees so let's consider a used case of alpha is equal to 60 degrees in this case and see how the circuit operates. So in order to understand that, let's consider the circuit again and let us try to understand with respect to one phase. If you understand one phase, remaining phases is just a replication of the single phase that we have studied. So now what happens is, let us say alpha is equal to 60. When I say alpha is equal to 60, that means you have to add 30 plus 60. That is, it will start at 90 degrees. So we'll be starting analysis from 90 degree point over here. So what will happen? Again, if you carefully observe, we are going to trigger the thyristor T1 at this instant, meaning to say that VA is the positive compared to that of VB and VC. It's the maximum positive voltage. So this will be plus and this will be minus. Consequently, what will happen? T1 will be forward biased and current starts flowing through the load in this particular fashion, plus and minus, and you'll be getting exactly what the source voltage that is V out will be equal to VA in this case. So what will happen is that the voltage waveform will start from this point straight away. It will go to this particular point because it's going to follow the supply voltage waveform. And once it reaches this point, it will exactly follow VA. So you will be getting a curve like this till this point. So now you might be having a question as how it is going to negative from 180 degrees. So we are starting at 90 degrees, meaning to say that 90 plus 120, we are adding 120 because each thyristor will be conducting for 120 degrees. So 90 plus 120 is 210. So till 210 degrees, we are not going to turn on the next thyristor, isn't it? So when we are not going to th turn on the next thyristor, even if phase B is more positive than phase, B, phase A, we are not triggering thyristor T2. As a result, what will happen is the waveform of the output will exactly follow the source voltage that is VA waveform till this point. The reason is because we are not triggering thyristor T2 and each thyristor will be conducting for a period of 120 degree. So at this point, what will happen? We'll be triggering thyristor T2. So because of that, consequently, what will happen? You will be having V out will be equal to VB in that case and T1 and T3 will be reversed biased and T2 only will be acting as short circuit. Again, it will follow the phase B with respect to the output voltage. So output voltage will exactly be equal to phase B. Again, during the next cycle, what happens? We'll be triggering T3. Again, it will be following phase C. So we can again extrapolate the input and output sides in this particular fashion. As I mentioned, always start from the point where you are trying to analyze the waveform. If you're starting from that, extrapolating this and understanding how it starts and how it ends will be very, very simple. I hope this point is clear. Now, what happens when alpha is equal to 120 degree? So let us consider a used case like 120 degree as in it should start at 120 plus 30 degree meaning to say it should start at 150 degree isn't it so at this point is where we are going to analyze the waveforms so at this point what will happen let's backtrack the waveform if you carefully observe at this point we are going to trigger thyristor t1 alone so v out will be equal to v a isn't it because it will be acting as short circuit and whatever we are supplying will be appearing across the load terminals. Consequently, this will start and it will reach the phase voltage waveform and it will exactly follow the pattern of phase voltage. So the reason why it's still continuing is it should conduct for a period of 120 degrees because you are not triggering any other thyristors. That is T2 and T3 are not triggered irrespective of they becoming more positive than compared to that of TA. And you might be having a question in this case as how is the thyristor still conducting when it is going in the negative direction? So this question will arise in the previous case as well. But I wanted to explain this in this particular waveform because it will be very, very clear for you. So at this point, if you carefully observe from 150 degree till it goes to 180 degrees and below 180 degrees, the supply voltage is going negative, meaning to say 
the supply voltage is minus and plus isn't it the supply voltage is going negative and you might be having a question as why is t1 is not getting reversed biased t1 is not getting reversed biased because previously the inductor will be charging with a polarity plus and minus initially so once it is charged what will happen is the property of inductor it does not allow sudden change in current it will reverse its polarity as minus and plus and ensures that the current still flows in the same direction as it was flowing previously so this minus will be appearing at this point that is cathode of t1 and plus will be appearing across the anode of t1 and the load voltage will be more positive compared to that of the source voltage as a result t1 will still be forward biased and it will be short circuited so it will still follow the source voltage waveform as a result you are getting voltage in the negative direction so this is one important point that you have to observe when the supply voltage is going negative usually the resistor will be reversed biased but it's not happening because of the usage of the inductor in this particular circuit i hope this point is clear so it's exactly following the waveform till this point so the same explanation holds good for alpha is equal to 60 degree as well as why it's going in the negative direction now what happens at this point at 270 degrees that is after 120 degree of conduction for thyristor t1 the next thyristor we are going to trigger consequently it will start following the phase b voltage waveform so exactly how the phase b voltage waveform is it will follow that again thyristor t3 will be triggered and it will follow the source voltage waveform with respect to phase c and we'll be extrapolating the input and output sides just like at the starting and the ending of the waveforms so i hope this point is clear so main observation here is when alpha is equal to 0 you are getting v out to be only in the positive direction and when alpha is equal to 60 that is when alpha is less than 90 degrees the output voltage goes negative meaning to say the average output voltage will be is in the positive side in this case but it has a possibility of going to negative and when alpha is greater than 90 degree that is 90 to 180 degree the output voltage will be more negative compared to positive isn't it so in this way you be controlling the value of alpha you can control the output voltage whether it has to be positive or negative or what value it has to be based on the firing angle you can control so that's one of the major advantages of considering an rl load because you are able to achieve output voltage in the negative direction as well whereas in case of an r load we were only seeing output voltage to be in the positive direction or zero i hope this video gave you a clear understanding of how to analyze a three phase half wave control rectifier with rl load in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below stay tuned thanks for watching